this video we will introduce radiation biology terminology that may be new to you. Additionally, this video should help you to be able to explain target theory and identify molecules that are more likely to cause cell death if they are radiated. You will be able to differentiate between direct and indirect radiation in cause and effects on the cell. And lastly, we will investigate types of chromosomal damage and their effects. We will start by looking at the target theory. There are different types of molecules that make up each cell in the human body. If radiation disrupts a molecule of a cell, chances are that there are other similar molecules within the cell that have the same function. So the loss of this one molecule would not be detrimental to normal cell function, so the cell can survive. However, some molecules in the cell are more essential to the cell's function, and if radiation interferes with the molecule, and there weren't others to perform the function, the cell would not be viable. A direct hit to an essential molecule is likely to cause cell death. The basic premise behind target theory. Certain molecules are essential and exclusive within the cell, and others are redundant, making them not as essential. Radiation hits to essential molecules can be fatal to the cell. It's like a game of chess. You can take out any piece but the queen, your pawns, knights, rooks, etc. are not essential to the game continuing, but when the queen is captured, the game is over. The target molecule is the queen, and the target molecule of a human cell is the DNA within the nucleus. When the DNA is deactivated by a radiation hit, the cell no longer can function properly. This leads to cell death or radiation-induced cell mutations. One thing I would like to clarify is that radiation interactions are random and do not choose the target. Target interactions happen indiscriminately and they can happen in two ways. Radiation hit can occur through direct or indirect energy transfers. A direct effect occurs when the radiation directly strikes the molecule causing damage. Indirect effect, also known as indirect hit theory, is when the radiation strikes a water molecule. As we learned in the last video, the human body is made up of 80% water and cells themselves are filled with cytoplasm, which is mostly water. This means the likelihood of damage occurring from indirect effect is greater than the chance of direct effects. What takes place when water molecules are ionized, also known as radiolysis, is the creation of multiple ions and free radicals. A free radical is a highly reactive, uncharged molecule with a single, unpaired electron in its outer shell. Because of this, the atom wants to find another atom to share its unpaired electron with through covalent bonding. The ions produced are also looking to connect with other atoms through ionic bonds. If you recall, an ion is an electrically charged particle because it has too many or too few electrons. This creates an environment for some undesirable reactions. Let's take a closer look at this process. With all the breakups and toxic relationships, this process resembles a daytime soap opera. Once ionized, the water molecule, made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, is broken up into the positive ion HOH positive and an ejected negatively charged electron, which is a negative ion. A couple of things can happen from here. The atoms could decide they want to reconnect and get back together, or maybe that electron decides it wants to see other atoms, so it joins with another water molecule, causing that water molecule to now be an ion. So now we are left with HOH positive and HOH negative, and things are tense. Reactions are likely to occur, and they do. These reactions are called disassociations, where these unstable molecules break up into ions and free radicals. HOH positive breaks up and forms H positive, which is a hydrogen ion, and OH free radical, which is a neutral hydroxide. HOH negative isn't going to hang around and not cause drama, so it tends to also disassociate into OH negative, which is a hydroxide ion, and a hydrogen free radical. So now we are left with some ions that may cause issues, or they might just settle down and reconnect back into a stable H2O relationship, but those free radicals, they are out to cause some serious problems. The neutral hydroxide finds another neutral hydroxide, and together their toxic relationship forms H2O2, which you might recognize as hydrogen peroxide. 
hydrogen peroxide is toxic to cells, so this is not good. Another interaction that can take place is a hydrogen-free radical hooking up with an oxygen molecule, and now together they are hydroperoxyl. Hydrogen peroxide and hydroperoxyl are damaging to cells and make up a majority of the damage from indirect effects. The effects of free radicals is far-reaching. They aren't just keeping the toxicity in their own relationship. They are coming to Thanksgiving and they're bringing the drama, destroying all kinds of relationship bonds. These are the results of radiolysis of water. From here, the chemicals produced cause damage to cells. This is called hydrolysis, which is defined as the chemical breakdown of a molecule from water. This mostly happens through the free radicals, which migrate to the target molecule and transfer their energy to it, causing damage. This is the indirect effects of radiation. Let's discuss some of the structural changes that occur in the DNA and RNA. If we look at a DNA like a ladder, it's easier to describe the types of damage that occur in the double helix structure of the DNA. The type of damage that we will discuss falls into two main categories. The first is main chain scission. This is a break in the rail of the DNA. It can manifest as a single strand break. These are typically repairable. Although, a single strand break can result in a point mutation if the wrong molecule steps in to fill the gap. A point mutation doesn't mean the cell dies. A double strand break, where both rails are involved, is far more damaging to the DNA molecule. This type of damage can happen when an alpha particle plows through. It can also happen when an X-ray photon interacts with one rail and the resulting scattered photon interacts with another rail. It is nearly impossible for the DNA molecule to repair itself, and the result is usually a frame shift mutation. These chemical changes alter the sequence of the genetic code and are bad news for the cell. Next, we will talk about the damage that takes place when a rung is damaged. Pairs of nitrogen bases make up the rungs of the ladder, and these map the precise genetic coding of an organism. Simple rung damage is when a breakage separates two of the nitrogenous bases. This is not typically catastrophic because the rails hold the bases together. The loss of a base molecule is a type of frame shift. Again, a frame shift mutation is one that alters the DNA base and changes the genetic code of that cell. These mutations typically result in cell death, but can be passed on to daughter cells during cell replication. Another cell molecule that can affect the entire cell if irradiated is the cell membrane. If damaged by radiation, the cell membrane no longer keeps foreign particles from entering the cell. In addition, the cell will begin to leak cytoplasm. This ultimately will lead to the cell's death. Now that we reviewed the effects of radiation on cells, in the next video we will look at factors that affect radiation dose and damage.